Finishing and polishing of dental restorations are important aspects of clinical procedures that enhance both aesthetics and longevity by preventing residual surface roughness that cause plaque accumulation, gingival irritation, and increased surface staining which result in poor or suboptimal aesthetics. Finishing, process of removing surface defects or scratches created during the contouring process through the use of cutting or grinding instruments or both. Polishing, process of providing luster or gloss on a material surface. Finishing surface polishing surface. A. Minimal irritation of soft and hard tissues by providing a well-tolerated surface by the oral tissue B. Simulates natural tooth surface aesthetics C. Less likely to trap food debris and plaque by reduction of roughness and scratches D. Resist bacterial adhesion and excessive plaque accumulation resulting in more hygienic restoration highly polished surface, more resistant to karyogenic action than a surface which is not polished. Polished tooth surface is approximately 15% less soluble in acid than one with a rough surface. The larger the abrasive particles, the deeper the scratch will be and conversely, the smaller the abrasive particle, the finer the scratch will be. If the particle size of the abrasive is decreased sufficiently, the scratches finally become very fine and with extremely fine abrasives, they may disappear entirely. Burrs Perio Care Diamond Burr 831 to 524, Denticare, Discs, Opti Disc, Cur, Rubber, One Gloss Set, Shofu, Brush, Goat Hair Brush, Mycerium, Felt, Felt Wheel, Mycerium, Pastes, Shiny A, Mycerium, Shiny B, Mycerium, Shiny C, Mycerium. Burr. A75-M flame-shaped diamond burr is used, at low speed, 10,000 rpm, to carry out 90% of finishing work, including definition of shape and primary and secondary anatomy. Discs, discs are used to define proximal areas and transition angles, in the areas where the burr is not able to reach. These instruments also are probably the most comfortable and accurate for defining the incisal and proximal shapes. Four grits are available, coarse, medium, fine, and superfine. We recommend the medium grit for removing excess and the fine grit for subtle modifications. Discs can be used for the contouring of all tooth surfaces as well as bulk reduction of excess material. Discs will help contour and finish curved surfaces such as labial proximal line angles, lingual marginal ridges, cervical areas, incisal edges, shaping and finishing of incisal corners, plus finishing and polishing of labial surfaces. They are also excellent for contouring and finishing of posterior marginal ridge areas, and for lingual and buccal surfaces. The 4-grit disc sequence, which is designed to gradually reduce the amount of roughness caused by initial abrasion until a smooth glossy tooth surface is achieved. To provide maximum control for the operator, Composite finishing should be done under low speed slash high torque, speed from 0 rpm to 30,000 rpms. Course The coarse grit is the stiffest of all the discs. This grit is used in conjunction with multi-fluted finishing burrs for gross contouring and shaping. When used with pressure, the coarse disc makes it easy to blend the composite into the tooth surface, eliminating the white line and raised margins. Medium The medium grit should be used to continue smoothing the restoration surface. Medium grits remove any remaining imperfections and marks. Fine This part of the grit sequence is where polish really starts to shine through. The fine grit helps remove the smallest imperfections while adding a nice luster to the restoration. Superfine The superfine grit further refines the surface smoothness attainable to create a highly polished restoration. Rubber tips these are used to eliminate the grooves that the burr and the disc leave. They have two main functions, when they are used firmly, a smooth abrasion results on the composite surface, and when they are used delicately, they are able to pre-polish. The finishing stage is improved with this kind of instrument. The correct speeds are 10,000 rpm for finishing and 5,000 rpm for polishing. Aluminum oxide cups should be used to polish gingival margins, achieve labial characterization and anatomy, and effectively reach areas such as the gingival third and the gingival margins of anterior teeth. 
Aluminum oxide points should be used to create labial grooves in veneers to finish and polish occlusal surfaces of posterior teeth and on lingual surfaces of anterior teeth. Brush and paste, when a goat hair brush rotary instrument is combined with 3 and 1 M diamond pastes for the initial shine stage, the result is a high gloss. The hardness of the brush permits the surface to be polished at high speed and deep zones to be polished at low speed. These brushes generate significant heat, they can be used at 1000 rpm with a gentle touch and without water and at 10,000 rpm under abundant water spray. Felt and paste, a felt wheel, which is a very soft material, is used with a 1-M aluminum oxide paste to achieve a very high gloss. These wheels generate significant heat. They can be used at 1000 rpm with a gentle touch and without water and at 20,000 rpm under abundant water spray. Diamond strips Diamond strips help start the interproximal finishing process while maintaining the integrity of the interproximal contact. A larger grit, 45-M strip, should be used for interproximal stripping of natural teeth or for gross removal of material, and smaller grits, 15M and 30M, should be used to start interproximal polishing. Aluminum oxide strips should be used to contour and polish interproximal areas. Use of a high quality strip will remove tenacious stains and create a high polish at the interproximal without damaging the soft tissue. It is important that the strip is thin and will stay intact as it is drawn through the interproximal contact areas. The final appearance shows the high gloss we can achieve with hybrid composite resin, presumed by many authors to be not polishable. Finishing and polishing should be achieved with a low-speed, high-torque handpiece, typically anywhere from 7000 rpm to 30,000 rpm. A high-speed handpiece may be used to pre-contour, but using anything over 30,000 rpm during finishing and polishing is too high. Low-speed, high-torque is preferable, because it gives the operator complete control. The best finishing and polishing technique depends on the type of restoration the dentist is presented with. When polishing a class 4 restoration, for instance, the dentist should rely mainly on discs. However, cups and points will help develop more realistic characterization when polishing a veneer. 21. Starting with a coarse disc or a carbide finishing burr, the restoration can be completely contoured moving from restorative material to tooth surface similar to burnishing metal. This can be done in a wet or dry field. The material should be extended well past the long bevel, and the dentist should not come back to the beveled margin. The final restoration should be feather edged onto the tooth surface past the beveled margin. If done properly, any white line or raised margin will completely disappear. At this stage, the disc should be flexed for maximum finishing potential. The different grit sizes medium, fine, and superfine should be continued through in succession. An enamel-like luster rapidly appears. The interproximal process should be started with diamond strips to maintain the integrity of the contact. One or two times through the interproximal should be sufficient, followed with the fine superfine aluminum oxide strip on dry surface until no resistance is felt, and a smooth surface is apparent. For the final polish, an aluminum oxide polishing paste with felt discs and points should be used. This is the step that really brings out the amazing final polish. On occlusal or incisal margins, 5 8 or 1 2 coarse disc should be used past the long bevel. Discs are always preferred on exposed margins. To start finishing from restoration to tooth surface, a coarse disc is used, followed by medium and then fine finishing with the superfine disc to achieve maximum polish. The 3 8 disc should be used at the gingival margin. Although this is a small diameter, the 3 8 disc can be flexed to gain access to hard to reach areas. The gingival half of the restoration can be polished nicely using flexible cups, but rubber must be kept off the occlusal and incisal margins. If class V restoration invades the proximal surfaces, the diamond strips and aluminum oxide strips should be used in the narrow width for polishing these surfaces. An aluminum oxide polishing paste with felt discs and points is recommended for the final polish. The coarse disc or contouring burr is used to start contouring and finishing. 
The coarse and medium discs can be used to complete the contouring of the veneer. It is desirable to maintain the character and anatomy placed in the facial surface. This cannot be done with discs, but cups and points are very useful for this purpose. To characterize, the cup is placed flat on the tooth surface, flex slightly, and run with pressure up and down the tooth surface. Blunting off sharp edges on a green stone prior to characterizing prevents scarring and overcharacterization. After a grooved surface has been developed, augmenting with rubber points highlights the grooves. Polishing the surface is completed with fine and then superfine polishing discs. To polish the interproximal surfaces, diamond and aluminum oxide strips are used as previously described. For the final polish, an aluminum oxide polishing paste with felt discs and points is used. Excessive staining is removed in the usual fashion. A small amount of aluminum oxide polishing paste is then applied to each surface and polish. To remove interproximal staining, each interproximal should be packed with polishing paste, and a wide, fine slash superfine polishing strip is used to polish the surface. The proper contouring, finishing, and polishing of anterior restorations is a key component to the long-term success of bonded restorations. The importance of three different phases in the finishing and polishing process. First, the appropriate restorative materials, from composites to polishers, must be carefully selected to help get the job done right. Then, the dentist must conceptualize the desired end result, and set up the restoration accordingly. And, finally, the proper finishing and polishing technique must be executed in order to achieve maximum restorative success. Alpine Ski House Post Operative Pain 68 Pain is described as an unpleasant sensory and emotional experience associated with actual or potential tissue damage. Thermal stimuli, the effective thermal stimulus is that which occurs at the dej at the site of neural excitation. Therefore, pain continues after removal of the stimulating object and until change at the dej becomes of a subthreshold value for pain perception. Osmotic stimuli when osmotic agents as concentrated sugar adhere to margins of leaky restoration or contact dentin they affect a flow of dentinal fluid with elicitation of pain. Mechanical stimuli, moving instruments on dentin will cause fluid movement in the dentinal tubules in and thus elicit pain. Electrical stimuli, electrical stimulation differs from the other stimuli in that the stimulus is not transmitted by dentinal fluid movement. It is rather transmitted by the passage of electrical charge via the moisture associated with the organic material in enamel, cementum, and dentin as well as in dentinal tubules. Evaporative stimuli, drying as with a blast of air, can remove some fluid from open tubules and cause capillary movement distally for the dentinal fluid into the emptied space. Causes of postoperative pain, A causes related to local anesthetic problems. B causes related to cavity preparation. C causes related to restorative phase. A causes related to local anesthetic problems, postoperative complications if any will usually consist of soreness from the trauma involved at the site of injection. The degree of trauma produced depends on the application technique, and how carefully the operator delivers the anesthetic solution. Causes of pain may be, needle can become dull after multiple injection, rapid deposition of the anesthetic solution and using very cold solution causing toma hematoma discoloration and the area usually tender b causes related to cavity preparation 1 using of dull instruments they generate more heat because more pressure is applied for cutting heat can destruct pulpal tissue and even burn dentin proper cooling is mandatory for elimination of excessive heat generated with the rotary instruments 2 Excessive pressure, this might cause actual aspiration of odontoblastic nuclei into the tubule. 3. Vibration, vibration results in a rebound response as a result of using eccentric burrs. 4. Dentin desiccation, may occur due to overheating of dentin during cutting, use of chemicals to sterile the cavity and slash or use of air as a coolant for final cavity toilet. These factors cause rapid outward movement of fluid through the dentinal tubules. 5. Actual cutting in dentin, 
Every square millimeter of dentin cut exposes 30,000 to 45,000 dentinal tubules with resultant fluid movement in each one of them stimulating nerve damage. See causes related to restorative phase, 1. Polymerization shrinkage of the resin composite, polymerization shrinkage results in stresses initiating adhesive failure at composite slash tooth interface resulting in micro leakage and secondary caries. 2. Undercured resin, undercuring may result if the light source is not significantly close to the surface of the material being polymerized, if the light source is of insufficient intensity, or if the light is attenuated by passage through restoration or structure. A well-cured surface layer covering incompletely the cured deeper portions and may cause bending of the outer layer, inward displacement, marginal fracture, or open margin. Furthermore, chemical toxicity most often results from the monomer or the bonding agent, which leaches out from the incompletely cured composite. 3. Errors during bonding procedure, failure to stick to the recommended etching time, etchant concentration, and bonding technique cited by the manufacturer could result in post-operative pain and improper bonding of the composite to the cavity walls. 4. Fractured restoration, during mastication, the fracture line usually opens up admitting oral fluids and oral microbes which cause movement of dentinal fluids and hypersensitivity. 5. Cuspal strain, this can be seen following a class 2 restoration, and in particular in mod restoration. As cavities increase in size, deformation in response to loading increases. Cuspal strain may result in adhesive failure, fatigue failure of the resin bond, or cohesive failure, fracture of restoration and slash or tooth structure. Thus, large class 2 mod cavities are ideally restored with restorations that include cuspal coverage. Moreover, materials with low elastic moduli deflect under stress placing considerable tensile stresses on adjacent cusps leading to cuspal strain. 6. Finishing procedures, during finishing of the cervical margins, cementum may be lost resulting in exposed dentin. Also, overheating during finishing may result in thermal irritation of the pulp with subsequent hypersensitivity. 7. Cracked tooth. Cracked tooth syndrome, the tooth will be painful on eating citrus fruits and foods. This sharp pain will disappear when pressure is released. Tooth could be cracked due to biting on hard object with excessive force, excessive removal of tooth structure, wide cavity, parafunctional habits, pin placement, polymerization shrinkage with large composite restoration or cracking with high speed handpiece. 8. Inadequately lined restoration, Metallic restorations conduct thermal changes to underlying dentin and pulp which often causes pain especially the few days post-restorative procedures. The pain is elicited after heat or cold application for the period of stimulation or a little longer. It often ceases few days later. The greater the temperature gradient, the more painful and the longer lasting stimulus. The dentin, which is effective thermal insulator when present in good bulk, seems to store the isotherms because of its conductivity. 9. Galvanism, if the similar metals are placed in a mouth minus 7 an electromotive force will be created rightward arrow the electric current will be conducted through the existing electrolyte i.e., the saliva, and the tissue fluid of tooth, bone and soft tissue. When two dissimilar restorations opposing each other come into contact, the current is suddenly short circuit the patient's involuntary disclosed teeth. If two teeth keep in contact, the electric cell polarizes and the current intensity falls below the pain perception threshold. It is evident that dissimilar metals in the same mouth which are not in contact, if both are brought into contact through a metallic object such as a fork, spoon, saliva ejector, or dental mirror will elicit pain. Treatment is seldom needed which include painting of one restoration with thick films of cavity varnish or, in exceptional cases, may require replacing of the restorations. The galvanic current depending on many factors such as, a, the difference in electric potential for dissimilar metals. b, the electrical resistance of the dentin and soft tissues which depends on the thickness of the remaining dentin. c, the current intensity. d, pulpal condition, whether or not the pulp is in a state of hyperalgesia due to inflammation.
10. Brodontalgia, this refers to pain occurring in a tooth in association with reduced pressure, which may occur in aviation. This could be due to expansion of air voids under a restoration, gases in a non-vital pulp. 11. Faulty occlusal and proximal contact relationships, a high occlusal contact will result in a tooth sensitive to biting pressure as well as hot and cold. An amalgam restoration may adjust itself in a matter of days by abrasion of the restorations, but with a gold restoration this correction is not likely. If the high spot is on the marginal ridge of an amalgam restoration there is greater danger of fracture of the amalgam. If the traumatic occlusion persists, some mobility may develop, along with the damage of the supporting structures. A light or open proximal contact may result in food impaction with gingival inflammation. The gingival inflammation can be quite severe resulting in a considerable patient discomfort. 12. Pulp degeneration, the state of health of an asymptomatic pulp organ is difficult to determine. Even as the operator prepares the tooth, the pulp may have experienced some degree of degeneration. Although, the preparation is conservative, the pulp may continue a degenerative process towards devitalization. Deep carious lesion with a subsequent properly based deep restoration may cause a pulp to devitalize many years later. Care in the selection and placement of pulp protection materials is essential to maintain pulp health, because the preoperative condition of the pulp cannot be adequately assessed. A pulp exposure followed by a direct pulp capping may initiate an immediate hyperemia with subsequent endodontic therapy. More often the organ will fail to reduce a low level of hyperemia and the tooth will remain sensitive to biting, pressure, hot and cold. If the case remains sensitive for several weeks, it may be assumed that the pulp cap has failed. A direct pulp cap is considered to be successful if the tooth is asymptomatic and gives a positive vitality test from 3 to 6 months later. 13. Gingival response to operative procedure Chemical tissue packs used to facilitate taking the elastic impressions may cause considerable soft tissue irritation, particularly if the tissue packing pressure is too great or the pack is left in place for too long. An interim dressing if acrylic temporaries are not trimmed and finished to their margins, the excess acrylic or cement used to set them may cause a retraction of the gingival margin. Cementing media left in the gingival crevice may cause gingival irritation ranging from mild to severe inflammation. Careful checking and cleansing of the cervical area are essential as a last step in the setting of a casting. An overhang may irritate the gingival tissues to such a degree that the patients will complain. A composite resin restoration, improperly finished, may have a cervical flash extending several millimeters beneath the gingiva. Amalgam overhangs in the posterior area may not resemble an acute situation, but the irritation may result in both soft tissue and alveolar bone loss, depending on the severity of the overhang and the response of the supporting structures. The overcontoured interproximal restorations will apply a pressure to the gingival papilla, producing a chronic inflammation and leading to hyperplasia or eventual loss of gingival tissue. Overcontoured buccal and lingual restorations will also apply pressure to the gingiva, in addition, they contribute to poor gingival health by preventing thorough cleansing of the area by natural or artificial means. 14. Leaking restoration, microleakage no restorative material can provide a completely hermetic seal of the cavity wall. Although properly constructed amalgam restoration exhibits clinically satisfactory adaptation that even improves on aging due to the deposition of the corrosion products at the interface, yet at least some leakage may occur at various degrees. The ingress of fluids can be the cause of postoperative pain or hypersensitivity not only its contents, irritant constituents and oral microbes, but also by affecting fluid movement in dentin. Similarly the dissolution of looting cement under a cast restoration will cause fluid movement. This problem is obvious in the case of the resin composite restorations due to the polymerization shrinkage and the difference in the coefficient of thermal expansion and contraction between the tooth structure and the resin material.